Let's talk a little bit more about this. Bring John Sandweg back. I say back because he was just here yesterday, the former acting director at ICE in the Obama years, to talk about what might happen. And then this headline crossed this afternoon. I have to tell you, John, I did a double take after what we, you and I had talked about and what we saw after the show. I wasn't sure what was happening, but now the pause is over. What was your reaction? Oh, yeah, I was stunned, Connell. I mean, listen, the, the Supreme Court obviously enjoined this to begin with. Um, and this seems to fly in the face of 15 years of precedent. This isn't the first time a state has tried to implement their own immigration enforcement system. Famously, Arizona did about 15 years ago. The Supreme Court shot that down. So I certainly was not expecting this to happen. And I was, I was you know, stunned really is the best word to describe it. What happens next? I mean, one of the things you did mention was the idea that other states, Arizona, and some others might, California, try copycat laws. Is that where we're going now that the, the well, pause is I, over? I think so. Yeah, Connell, I have to think so. Now that the Supreme Court has given a green light to it, I would be stunned if we don't see legislation introduced as soon as, you know, maybe today, maybe tomorrow. Uh, I think a state like Florida certainly would be very likely to pass its own scheme. I think that a state like Arizona, even where you have a Democratic governor, the, the, certainly the legislature will probably look hard at passing something very similar to what Texas did. But look, look this, is, this is groundbreaking, right? I mean, the Supreme Court for the first time has recognized or now, let me be clear, this is a temporary decision. So yes. mind you, they just lifted an injunction. There's always the possibility that the circuit court blocks this permanently or the Supreme Court ultimately blocks it. But for the moment, Texas has a green light to enforce its own immigration enforcement laws. And I have to tell you, I, I would certainly expect other states to follow suit very quickly. Right. So for the time being, the local cops essentially in Texas can make these immigration-related arrests that we've been talking about leading up to this, as opposed to the opposite being true, where they would have to wait to see how the courts rule. The litigation will play out, but they can make the arrests. In their dissenting opinions, Justices Sotomayor and Jackson today said this order might, quote, sow chaos. What do you think? I think they're exactly right. I mean, listen, this is novel. There's going to need to be systems worked out between the Border Patrol agents, DHS writ large, and the Texas state, you know, the various Texas law enforcement agencies that are now authorized to issue arrests. There are real questions here. Texas tried to mimic this, do this in a way that made it look just like federal law so that they could argue in court that there was no conflict and therefore that it was not unconstitutional. But there are, you know, there are questions here, Connell, as we all know, the crux of the problem at the border is not Border Patrol's capacity to arrest. You know, certainly the numbers are overwhelming, but 99 percent of these people are being apprehended by the Border Patrol. The problem is they all claim asylum and what do we do with it? I don't know how this is going to work when Texas arrests a migrant who then makes an asylum claim, how Texas is going to honor their federal right to asylum. And then the big question is, there's a deportation provision in this bill. Is Texas going to try to start deporting migrants? And, and remember, Connell, most of these migrants are not actually Mexican. They're from countries all over the world. Is Texas going to start trying to do repatriation flights to Honduras, El Salvador, you know, Haiti? So millions of questions here. But the key here on the ground is just to make sure that there's communication between the Border Patrol agents and the law enforcement agents. I worry that this tension right. might have limited some of that communication, but we need that deconfliction so that there's not, you know, everything goes smoothly. What would you say about that relationship and how tense it's become in, in the last few months? Because, you know, at the leadership level, at the political level, we know there's tension and, you know, it's on purpose. It's, it's out there in the news all the time. What about in the ranks there for uh, Border Patrol versus the local authorities? Do you know anything about it? Yeah, I'll tell you this, Connell. I, will, I, I don't know particularly right at this very moment, but I will say this. I've spent a tremendous amount of time at that border, that even when the political rhetoric gets hot between the politicians and, and Washington, uh, the communication on the ground and the cooperation on the ground generally is good. Mm -hmm. So if there's one thing that gives me optimism about this is that the professional law enforcement officers who are out there, you know, on the front lines, the, the Border Patrol sector chief, the local police, you know, leadership generally communicate very well and don't let that political rhetoric get in the way. So okay. while, I mean, there's going to be a lot of tension and, and Governor Abbott taking a victory lap on this one, um, I'm hopeful and optimistic that the, the guys on the ground will be talking. Yeah, and to your point earlier, I'm wondering if Arizona came out and tried to do their own thing, hypothetically, whether, could they even do that when the litigation is playing out in Texas? I mean, I don't know the answer. Do you, real quick, before we go? Or? Well, I mean, they could, they could quickly pass the law, and, and unless there's an injunction, unless somebody ran to a federal court here in Arizona and got, you know, got the state to stop the state, sure, right. they could do it. And uh, I'm not sure there would be an injunction out the Supreme Court has let the Texas law go into effect. Right. Again, we're not saying that's going to happen. John was just speculating that's something that could happen. Um, again, John, thank you for hopping on with us today after joining us yesterday. Now that the news changed like it did, uh, John Sandwick with us today. Right, we'll Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.